Hi there, and welcome to the Yardcast. This is the show where we talk to professionals and get tips and advice to help you guys have the best looking yard in the neighborhood. As always, I'm your host, Bob Walters, and you may have noticed that we took the summer off and we're going to be making some changes to the show. And why exactly is this? Well, my original thought was that I could record myself doing a lot of these uh, different jobs in the yard, edit it, and then put it out for you guys. Problem with that is, is that yard work is very seasonal, and in some cases very time specific, and I couldn't do things in my yard outside of season and still have it be effective and show you guys effective results, but if I did it during that window, by the time the episode got out to you guys, it was the end of the window to do that, and if you, you, know, you weren't able to jump on it right that weekend, you missed the opportunity. So it turns out that doing videos is just too time consuming in order to convey the information quickly to you guys, and that's really the important thing. So what I've decided to do is rather than me try to interpret and produce a video on what to do, we're just going to go straight to the source, to the people I get my information from, the landscapers, the gardeners. Uh, the, the people who have degrees in this stuff, who have the work experience, decades of experience doing these things, and we're going to have them tell you, you know, straight from the horse's mouth what you need to be doing. And I think this will be really great. Um, you're going to get a lot better information, a lot more uh, thorough. You're going to get the reasons behind doing not just what to do, but why you're doing it. And I think there's gonna, you guys are going to get a lot of great information. And hopefully, maybe down the line, I can start producing some videos again. But for now, I think this is going to be this is going to allow us to make more timely content, more regular content, and really help you guys out. So, to kick off the new format, we are going to be starting with aerating and seeding a cool weather grass uh, like fescue, which does really well here in the Triangle area. And this is going to be a really thorough episode. It's, uh, it's a little bit of a longer one, about 23 minutes, I think. But it gives you all the information about aerating, uh, the type of equipment to use, how exactly to aerate. We're going to get into the fertilizer and the lime and how to figure out how much you need of each. Uh, specifics about the seed you're going to use. And we're even going to get into a couple months down the road putting out winter fertilizer to you know help give your yard that extra boost to weather the the cold winter months so it's a really big episode it's got a lot of great information i think you guys are going to dig it and um uh yeah uh let's uh let's not wait any longer here's how to seed and uh fertilize your lawn in the winter so fescue because there's you know obviously there's a couple different kinds of grass um bermuda and stuff like that gets reseeded in the spring but fescue, and are there any other types? Well, the warm season grasses are zoysia, Bermuda, St. Augustine's, and those all have a different maintenance program and, and reseeding thing. Like you mentioned, those would all be done like May, June. Um, they also get fertilized during the summer and that kind of thing. But today, I was going to talk about reseeding a fescue along a, a cool season grass, which mm -hmm. would be um, tall fescue. Um, bluegrass, that kind of thing. The most common uh, lawn in the Triangle area is just a, a tall fescue lawn. So what you want to do is the, the optimum time to reseed is September 15th to September 30th, uh, especially if you don't have irrigation because that's uh, after Labor Day the weather turns a little bit cooler mm -hmm. um, and um, also, if, if we get a rainstorm, uh, the nights are cooler also and the seed will germinate uh, really well. You don't want to do it much after the first week in October because it, it takes a couple of weeks for the seed to germinate and, and come out. And uh, if you do it uh, too far into October, the leaves start to fall and that's detrimental. So the, right, uh, because then they cover it up. It's hard for these young blades of grass to grow up with something sitting on top of it and plus it's not going to get any sun right and you know the only way that you really get the leaves off is by blowing them you really can't rake because you pull up the grass so you really want to uh, aim to do this between september 15th and september 30th so the key thing is is getting ready to do it what do you need to do well if you 
um, let's look at it this way. If you have a lot of weeds and things like that and, and, and you're really basically starting from scratch, uh, what you can do is um, probably about now, right around the 1st of September, you want to spray with Roundup and you want to use kill the, everything kill the kill, whole yard. kill everything um, now you don't necessarily have to kill everything if, if you just have some bad spots say like if you have fescue and you've got some patches of Bermuda growing within the fescue you could just spray those spots those Bermuda spots to kill the Bermuda you don't necessarily have to kill the whole lawn unless your lawn is majority weeds or if you decided you wanted to sod yeah, if you want to sod, but we're going to well, talk. We're not talking sod right no, now. No, we're going to talk about seeding because really, if you're going to sod a fescue yard and you don't have irrigation, you definitely want to wait towards the end of October. Um, if you have irrigation, earlier October would be would be okay. So anyway, what you're going to do? The first thing, uh, let's say that you do have a weed problem, or your lawn's in terrible shape, or your lawn's mostly Bermuda, and you want to try to convert to fescue. So what you're going to do is you're going to spray Roundup. You want to do it around the 1st of September. Mm -hmm. And um, you want to spray the, the yard good. Um, and what will happen is, is, is you, should see, um, you should see the results you know, fairly quickly. And after seven days, you'll have a good idea if you, if you killed most of the, the grass. Uh, and at that point, what I would do is go back and spot spray any places that you missed. Um, that, that that didn't do and one thing that might be a little bit of a helpful hint is you can buy um, a dye especially at some place like John Deere um, but it might be there might be also some at, at uh, Lowe's and Home Depot but you can buy a dye to put in the roundup so you can actually see where you're spraying and that might be helpful if you're trying to spray uh, a whole yard and mm. it's something that you don't normally do um, so you go ahead and, and you do that, you either spray the whole yard or you spot spray. And, and then when that's finished, what you want to do is you want to cut the grass as low as possible. Uh, you put your mower setting, basically scalp it, cut it as low as you possibly can. And uh, um, the spots, if you're just doing spot spraying, what you'd want to do is maybe use a weed eater and cut those areas, just weed eat those areas down as low as you can right. um, to prepare those spots. Uh, the next step now, and, and this would include if you didn't have to spray because you don't have weeds and that kind of thing. This is so, what you do regardless. Regardless. So what you so now we've got the weeds killed in spots, or we've killed the whole lawn, or we have no weeds and we just want to reseed. So what we're going to do at this point is is you're going to go in and you're going to rake the whole yard. Um, if if you've killed all the grass, you want to you want to you know rake all, uh, because you've cut it so short. You want to rake all that stuff up and get as clean as possible. If you didn't kill any weeds and all, and you still have your your entire lawn there, you want to rake it so that you get up the fat thatch that's accumulated over the uh, the course of the season. Because you know really, you you shouldn't be bagging your grass. There's no reason to do that if you cut it frequently enough during the year you want to leave the clippings on on the grass as long right. as they're not so thick that they're inhibiting sunlight hitting the grass because your clippings are a tremendous source of nitrogen for the grass so but this is the one point of the year where you do want to get up those clippings that thatch and all because you want to have um, as good a contact with the seed with the ground as possible well and the so, thatch is you're good the thatch is going to cause the same problem as the leaves falling in october right. they're going to be harder for the grass to grow up through it right so so you're going to go ahead and, and rake your entire yard, um, and that's probably the, the biggest pain in the neck of the whole job is, is, is doing that. So and most people don't do it. Right. And if you're hiring a lawn service um, to do it, um, and, and you're going to spend the money to have it aerated and everything, uh, you know, you can either hire them to rake it, or that might be something that you go ahead and do, save a little bit of money and do the raking yourself. Um, so you know you want to do that right before you get ready to to uh, aerate the yard okay so the next step is is going to be if you, you've prepared the yard you've raked it so now you're ready to aerate and reseed so what you want to do is you want to use a core aerator and this is really important because a lot of people they use um, a spike aerator and that really doesn't do anything to help your yard a spike aerator just puts holes in the ground and actually what it's doing if you have a lot of clay soil um, when the spike goes into the ground it's actually compressing 
the soil around the spike, the hole, so it's, it's, it's kind of like a clay pot effect. What you really want to use is what's called a core aerator. You can rent them at the rental stores, Home Depot, Lowe's, um, or you can hire a service to do it. And what this actually does is, as you go over the yard, it pulls out a core or plug from the yard and just deposits, deposits it on top of the lawn. Um, this this uh, gets air down into the roots of the existing lawn and it also creates spots for the seed to come up. And doesn't compact the dirt it around compact, where it went in. Exactly. And you can tell if somebody has used a, a core aerator because the yard will look like a million dogs pooped in it. <laughs> right. So the next, the next uh, thing, a uh, big mistake that is made is uh, when you hire a company, and a lot of times when someone just does it themselves, they rent the machine and do it, um, what they do is they go over the yard one time. I would strongly recommend that what you do is you go over it twice. You go over it one direction and then go over it another direction like a checkerboard. This will give you really good, good coverage of the aeration and really set yourself up for success with the reseeding. Uh, it takes a, a little bit longer and if you're hiring somebody to do it uh, and they're out there um, uh, doing it, you might ask them to make sure that they go over it twice in, in, in both directions. Uh, a lot of these lawn services now use uh, an aerator that they pull behind a tractor. Um, and if you have a small yard, that's really not the way to go because what's happening is, is the tractor's running over what they aerated and, and you're, you're not getting uh, a really good job. Uh, it's doing it, the same thing that the spike aerator is doing. Yeah, it's compressing it, everything again. Exactly. If your, yard's, if your yard is is really big, you know, then that might be something that you do. But a small yard um, where uh, um, it's really tight, uh, the tractor's really more detrimental than to do it, you know, with the, with the walk behind the aerator. Um, you should easily be able to aerate your yard uh, in twice the time that it would normally take you to cut your grass if you use a push mower. Okay, so now now you've um, uh, you've gotten to the point where you've aerated and you're you're ready to to, to reseed. Well you don't want to just seed, you want to you want to seed, fertilize, and probably lime. Uh, if you're on the fence and you don't know whether you need to lime or not, you probably should go ahead and lime. Uh, if you have been liming you could you can do a soil test. The uh, um, uh, North Carolina Department of Agriculture um, down on Reedy Creek Road will actually do a soil analysis for you free. You have to call them up and get a box or take a soil sample down there and put it in the box and they'll tell you exactly how much nitrogen, I mean exactly how much fertilizer and how much lime you need on your yard. But uh, in this area because of the clay soils usually you do need to add lime. Um, on services probably something that you're going to have to do um, two or three times, uh, two or three years in a row to, in order to get what is called your pH um, to, the, to, to the proper level that it needs to be. Now in some cases if, you're, if your soil levels are way out of whack, way too acidic or way <laughs> too uh, basic and you need to add a, like, it, does it get to the point sometimes where you need to add these chemicals like a month or two ahead of time in order to get it to where it needs to be for the grass when you see it? Well, it would have to be even a longer period of time. You would be needing to lime probably in the spring by the fall. And, and uh, that's why I say normally, um, very rarely uh, is, is it not going to be acidic. In all the years that I've done it, um, I don't know that I've ever, I've had a sample come back that didn't need very much lime, didn't need lime at all. Lime. Um, you can buy lime at the garden centers, uh, Home Depot, Lowe's, 
and uh, you're going to put that out. You do, and you want to do this after you've you've raked. You can do it before before you've aerated, but you want to do it after you've raked. Um, the, so after you've done your lime, and um, uh, if you have no idea uh, what your soil is, uh, what the pH of the soil is, that's what you're measuring, and, and what pH measures is how easily the soil releases the nutri nutrients to the roots of the grass, and that's why it's important for it to be the proper level. So if, um, if you have no idea, you probably want to use somewhere between 10 and 20 pounds of lime per thousand square feet. Uh, then the next thing you want to do is fertilize. Uh, what you want to do is use a starter fertilizer. Um, it's a, sp a special formulation for um, starting um, fertilizer, ger newly germinating fertilizer. Uh, and a good starter fertilizer releases with, with some time. Um, and uh, again, that's sold in the garden centers, Home Depot, Lowe's, John Deere Landscape sells it. Um, and, and it's worth it to invest in, in a good starter fertilizer. What's the, uh, what's the mix on that? Um, Is that the 14-14? No, no, no. It's, it's like 18, uh, 6, 12, something like that. Okay. Um, it'll, it'll say starter fertilizer on it. So, um, uh, um, just go to, uh, one of those, uh, stores and, and purchase that and, um, say on the bag what you should use if you don't have a, uh, a, a soil sample done uh, because a soil sample uh, will tell you exactly how much nitrogen which is the first number how much um, uh, potassium which is the third number and how much phosphorus which is the middle number uh, and um, uh, each each uh, element is important in the growth of the lawn Okay, so after you've uh, fertilized, um, which again, you can do that before you aerate, but after you've raked, um, or you can do all this after you've, you've aerated, and you'll, you'll put down the fertilizer with a rotary spreader, spreader also. Uh, the last step would be to put down, down your seed, and this is the most Im important thing, and this is where you want to spend your money wisely. Um, what you want to do is you want to buy a, a seed, a tall fescue, that is a blend of different varieties that have been selected for this area. Um, you need to be really careful uh, because at some of the big box stores um, where they sell the seed cheaper, the problem is, is that the germination is not as good and it may also have some weed seeds in it. Every bag of seed has a tag on it that's been inspected by the Department of Agriculture and on it, it will tell you what the percent germination is and how many, wh how, what percentage of weeds there is. And it breaks the weeds down into, can break the weeds down into certain weeds and um, also noxious weeds. Um, so this is where you'll get the, the, the variation in price. It's kind of like if it uh, seems to be a really good deal, you may need to make sure to look at the label to make sure that you're really getting what you're hoping to get. What the label should say is you should have over 90% germination and there should be no noxious weed seeds. Um, and this is, this is really important. The garden centers, uh, John Deere Landscape, some of the specialty stores, always sell seed that falls into that category. Some of the big box stores and other places you need to be a little bit more careful. They sell good seed but they may have several different uh, selections and you need to make sure you're getting the right one so it's not not just price that matters. Um, you know you buy a seed that only germinates 80% um, you know, you're, you're, you're wasting 10 to 15% of, of the seed that you're buying. And so if, if it's uh, 10 to 15% cheaper, that's the reason why. <laughs> so really important to make sure that it's good seed. And you want a blend of seed because um, several varieties, you will not be able with your eye to tell the difference between the varieties. But varieties have different characteristics, drought tolerance, uh, water tolerance, uh, as far as too much water, sun tolerance, uh, heat tolerance, and what they do is they use a blend so that, that uh, you basically have coverages for all these different uh, variations of climate. And since um, uh, John Deere sells a, a, what they call transition blend, and the name suggests what we are, we're a transition area. You can grow every type of grass here in the Triangle area, um, and, but but 
um, you know, we're right at the division the line runs through the county as far as warm season grasses and cool season grasses. So uh, we can tend to have problems with warm season grasses in the winter and we have problems with cool season grasses in the summer with the heat and the drought. Um, so anyway, you, you definitely want to make sure that you select a tall fescue that is several varieties of, of seed, um, at least uh, three or four different varieties within the mix. Um, what you want to do is you want to go ahead and um, uh, um, put out the, uh, the seed and um, again you can use a rotary spreader. A uh, little trick that you might do is put some seed in a bucket and walk along the perimeter of the property and throw it out by hand so that when you go through with the, with the rotor spreader you don't have to go all the way to the edge and be throwing seed into your beds. Basically you can control throwing out the seed with your hand um, on the edges of the natural areas, the walkways, the driveway. Um, because the other stuff, the seed and the lime, it doesn't matter if you get some in your flower bed, but if you get a bunch of grass seed in your flower bed you're going to spend quite a bit of time pulling pulling it out or, or spraying it exactly right. so that that's a little little helpful hint that that, that, that might help um, and and so you go ahead and, and, and you seed um, if you uh, if you have an irrigation system um, you want to go ahead and water um, the trick with watering uh, once you've seeded is that if you think about it um, there are no roots on the seed so what you want to do is you want to keep the ground moist until the seed germinates. So you don't have to water for a long time. You have to water just enough to get the seed wet and get the ground wet so that the seed coat will break and the seed will germinate. So for the first week or so, seven to ten days, um, you want to water frequently but water very little. Um, same thing if you're going to use a, a, a sprinkler if you don't have an irrigation system. Uh, there's no, no sense in turning it on and, and watering for an hour. I mean, you, you literally only need to get the seed wet and the ground wet. Probably uh, only need to water for five to ten minutes with a, with a sprinkler, about five minutes probably at most. Irrigation system, you know, if you have a, a, um, rotors, probably only need to water uh, uh, 10 to 15 minutes with rotors, two or three minutes with, with uh, stationary spray heads. Um, so once the seed germinates in seven to ten days, um, then what you want to do is start backing off on the water, water less frequently but more time. Um, and, and, and the temperatures will be cooler so the yard won't require as much water so um, you know you probably are, are down to uh, depending on rainfall and things like that watering maybe once a week and just remember you know once the once the seeds germinate and the root goes into the ground the, the, the plant can start to get its own water so you have to be careful not to overwater. Uh, the last thing in doing your lawn, what's really important is between Thanksgiving and Christmas, and this is probably the most important thing to do with your yard, is to fertilize again. And you, this is the time when you want to use a winter fertilizer, it's called a winterizer fertilizer. And what this, this, this fertilizer is formulated to help the grass grow, the, root, the roots of the grass grow over the winter. And why this is so important is because here in the Triangle area, the ground tends not to freeze, or if it does freeze, it freezes very little for a short period of time. So actually, um, we can have uh, root growth all through the winter. And this fertilizer, this formulation is formulated so that, that there is more root growth and it's a slow release fertilizer. And um, uh, what happens is, is the more root growth that you can get over the winter months um, and going into the spring and everything, the better chance that you will have that, that your lawn will be able to tolerate uh, you know, heat and drought in the summertime. So getting that root growth in the, in the winter uh, is, is really important and a winterizer fertilizer um, is what you need to buy and again you can buy those at uh, uh, the garden centers, John Deere Landscapes, uh, the big boxes um, and just, just look for, it'll say on the bag, winterizer fertilizer. Um, so, Do you remember what that mix is? <laughs> no. Okay. So I'll look it up uh, and put it in the notes. So uh, the only other thing that I, I could say to you is, is what you want to try to do 
um, you, you'll be you, what what should happen is if you do for um, seed between the 15th and 30th of September um, by the middle of October uh, you should see the grass coming up and 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 um, should see where you might have some bare spots you could always throw out a little bit of seed in those bare spots at that point um, end of October early November is when the leaves are going to start to fall so it, it's always really really helpful the reason for doing it in the time frame of the 15th to the 30th is because if things work out right and we get a couple of rainfalls you should be able to cut your grass once or twice before the leaves fall and this is really important because this will help the blades thicken up and the lawn get established and it's always really helpful if you're able weather dependent to have cut the grass once or twice before it goes dormant in 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 the fall um, the other thing that I would recommend is is that um, especially if you've um, renovated the entire lawn you need to be really careful when the leaves fall um, it's going to be much better if you blow the leaves rather than rake the leaves you're because you're going to lose a certain amount of your grass if, if you rake the leaves right the rank will yank the rake will yank the grass up right so you're going to be best off if you uh, if you uh, blow the leaves off um, and then again another helpful hint um, in the very beginning um, at the end of October beginning of November the leaf fall is going to be fairly light and what I would do is I would blow the leaves off the grass into your beds um, and what I've always done in the past is uh, we do that until Thanksgiving and right before Thanksgiving which is when the leaves trucks come around and stuff that's when we go through and we, we uh, uh, get the leaves up on the, um, uh, in, in the beds and, and everything we go through and do everything one time then and then depending on how much has fallen um, we between Thanksgiving and Christmas we blow off the grass again into the beds and then right before Christmas uh, we clean everything up again and that usually takes care of it for the entire season so um, that's my recommendation on renovating and redoing a lawn so that's it folks that's our episode on aerating and seeding your lawn in the fall I hope you took notes there's a lot of information there but it's all really good info now uh, a little bit of housekeeping here. We mentioned some different fertilizers, but couldn't remember the exact mix numbers. The, the starter fertilizer mentioned, uh, you're probably going to be looking for a mix of about 18, 24, 12, or something like that. You might see an 18, 20, and 3 mix, uh, or, so or something kind of close to that range. Um, and then for the winter fertilizer, the winter fertilizers are usually a 28, 0, and 3, or maybe a 24, and 0, and 11. You know, again, it's, it's somewhere in that range, but that's about what you should be looking for. So, again, that was our episode on aerating and seeding your lawn. Uh, we're looking forward to bringing you more great episodes in the future, hopefully the very near future. Um, I'm working on one for next week, uh, and so cross your fingers. Hopefully that's out very soon. But again, I hope you enjoyed this. If you have any questions or comments, um, please go to our page, the Yardcast page on TriangleLife.tv uh, and leave a comment. Uh, if this ends up on uh, uh, YouTube, I, I might do that. Feel free to uh, say something in the comments. Uh, like it, let us know what you think. And, um, you know, stick around. we got a lot more great advice ahead. So, you guys have a good week, good luck in your yards, and we will see you next time. Thank you.